Welcome to my channel. I want to talk about something that can help strengthen your faith if you're sometimes wondering or you're challenged about whether or not God exists. But before I do that, I have to thank each and every one of you for coming to my channel. Thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for liking them, commenting on them, and sharing them. And thank you especially for all the people that have subscribed to my channel. It, my mind is blown. It's just amazing to me. It just keeps growing and growing and growing. And, and all I can do is say thank you. What we're going to look at today <clears throat> is a website or a YouTube channel that you may not be familiar with, but I am, that can help you in strengthening your faith and understanding that the Bible is true. Now, when I say that, I do not mean that every single verse of the Bible is absolutely literally true. There's lots of figures of speech in the Bible, there's allegories, there's fables, there's all sorts of types of uh, literary material. But when the Bible talks about events that occurred, historical events, it's possible to prove that those events actually occurred through archaeology. And this gentleman who has this channel is an archaeologist and he was born and raised in the Mideast and he has tremendous insight into biblical sites in, in the Mideast and to what the Bible says about them. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to show you just a little bit of a 28-minute video that he does <clears throat> talking about searching for the Garden of Eden. And this is just one, just one of many uh, videos that he has. Let's take a look real quick. Biblical Bible evidence unearthed in Nineveh, the Temple Mount, where is it, where isn't it, what is it, uh, Mamre, where God appeared to Abraham. Um, I just watched one today about Jacob wrestling with an angel, and these sites are known. They're, they've been uh, excavated. People know about them, but he puts them together in a way that's that's very entertaining and very fascinating. If you fascinating. want to have body mastery, I can almost and guarantee so, you you're wasting thousands of dollars get in past five, this 10, ad. 20 years of your Genesis and chapter stop 2. stop the video so we can start over. And so I'm just going to play a little bit of this so you get a sense of what this guy is doing. But if you ever have any doubts about whether or not God is real or whether or not the Bible is true, this website, this channel on YouTube, can help strengthen your belief, can help you understand that these are actual historical events that are recorded in the Bible, and we have the evidence for them. Uh, I watched one the other day where um, a Israeli archaeologist found the oldest biblical manuscripts in the world dating to 700 BCE, and they were, amazingly, they were written on silver. You know, I'm used to hearing about manuscripts written, written on uh, lambskin and that type of stuff, but these were actually written on silver, and they were found in a tomb in Jerusalem, which is remarkable in and of itself because grave robbers in the Mideast uh, have cleaned out many of the tombs that have been found long before the archaeologists get to them but this one had something special about it which kept it hidden and so they were able to find these manuscripts it's actually um contains some verses from numbers so you know i could i could jabber on and on about this but Rather than do that, let me just play this video for you a little bit and let you see what I'm talking about.
Genesis chapter 2 describes the location of the Garden of Eden in relationship to four rivers. Three of these rivers are known, and one is a mystery, uh, the Lost River of Eden, so to speak. Uh, this is the river that the Bible calls the Pishon. Now, the biggest clue to understanding where to go looking for the Pishon River is in Genesis 2.11, where it says the Pishon, it winds through the entire land of Havilah. Therefore, if we know where the ancient land of Havilah is located, then we know where to go looking for the Pishon River. Genesis 25.18 says, the land of Havilah is opposite Egypt in the direction of Assyria. And so the only land that is opposite Egypt, that is east of Egypt on the way to Assyria, is the Arabian Peninsula what is known today as the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. This is Expedition Bible and we're in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> it's fascinating how he does this. What happened here? It's fascinating how he does this. He, he, uh, he did some research and he found a Oh, these headphones just drive me crazy. Hold on a minute. Okay. Um, he found uh, some research by a, a geologist, an Arabian geologist, who had done a satellite survey of the, Arab the, the uh, desert in Arabia and had discovered an ancient riverbed. And so what he and his son set out to do is they set out to locate this riverbed and follow it along and see if they can figure out where it actually is and what it, where it ends up. And so they go into Saudi Arabia, they actually camp in the desert and they trace the, the um, direction of this river. Now, obviously it's not a river now, it's dried up, but uh, from space you can actually see its outline and so they go into Saudi Arabia and they actually trace the river. Mm. EVE ONLINE Nothing IS A like VAST UNIVERSE. Goes through the ancient land of the Kassites which in ancient times was called Kush. There's actually two lands called Kush. One is in Africa, up in Ethiopia, and the other one is in what is today Iran. Now, which one is the Gihon River? Well, it has to be the one that flows through uh, what is today Iran, the Kush of the Kassites, because that is the river that then comes and has its confluence with the Tigris and Euphrates. Of course, the Nile River that flowed through the other Kush in Ethiopia never has a confluence with the Euphrates and Tigris rivers because it's on a different continent. It's the largest river in Iran and where it has its confluence with the Euphrates and the Tigris is a border between Iraq and Iran and therefore a very sensitive place and so it's a bit nerve-wracking going down into that area and I wanted to get closer but I got as close as I could. But you can see the bridge over here. This bridge is not going over the Tigris and Euphrates. This bridge is going over what is called the Karun River. And the Karun River is uh, the main candidate for the Gihon. Genesis 10, 2 says, Now a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from there it parted and became four river heads. One thing that really helped me understand Genesis 2 in regards to these four rivers is reading the renowned Hebrew scholar E.A. Spicer in the Anchor Bible Commentary. Uh, there he explains the meaning of this verse because it can sound very confusing. Uh, it kind of has that upriver uh, perspective where it's talking about one river that then becomes four branches that go up to the head streams. And the reason that's confusing is we know that's not what rivers do. Rivers do the opposite. They flow from their heads, from their beginnings, down to the confluences that they have with other rivers. And the Hebrew allows for this meaning. Spicer wrote, in verse 10, the term heads can have nothing to do with streams in which the river breaks up after it leaves Eden, but designates instead four separate branches which have merged within Eden. There is thus no basis for the search for the Pishon 
in various remote regions of the world. All right, well, my son Barry and I are flying to Riyadh, Saudi Arabia today. So they go on and they actually find the evidence of this river. For the biblical Pishon River, it drains the Hejaz Mountains and flows out to the Euphrates and Tigris rivers. Look at that. That's obviously Of course, a river. today, for most of the year, this river is dry. But it was formed in ancient times, when the land between Egypt and Assyria, called Havilah, had a much wetter climate that supported a continually flowing river that wound its way across the entire land. Scholars estimate that this river continually flowed until around 2000 BC, when the climate changed, causing the river to dry up. Now we were upriver where it drains the Hejaz Mountains and the volcanic rock that is up in the Hejaz Mountains now can be found in the gravel in the bed of this ancient river. You have granite and you have this black basalt. Uh, you have quartz. I won't show you anymore. Golly days. I gotta quit doing that. Um, the point of all this is that if you want confirmation that the historical accounts in the Bible are accurate and true, then you could do a lot worse than to go to this guy's channel and watch some of his videos. He goes through various tells and he ties them into the records in the Bible and shows you exactly how the historical record in the Bible is actually accurate. And I know that there have been scholars and people that have made fun of the Bible and said it's all a bunch of myth and fables and so forth and so on. But the fact is that there is a tremendous body of evidence in the Mideast that the historical records in the Bible are actually true. And this particular video is going all the way back to Genesis, <laughs> to the Garden of Eden, and he actually figures out the general area where the Garden of Eden would have been located based upon the biblical texts and the archeological evidence and the geological evidence that he finds. So I highly recommend this channel to you. I think you could do a lot worse than to go here and watch some, especially if you're a believer and you sometimes feel like your faith is being challenged or if someone is saying to you, Oh, the Bible's just a bunch of myth and fables. You can take them to this site and show them. Oh, that's, sorry, that's not true. The Bible is an accurate historical record of what took place. Yes, it's told from God's point of view, but it is still historically accurate. And we know that because we have a tremendous amount of archaeological evidence to prove it. So I hope this has been beneficial to you. I hope that you can find this useful in your life. <clears throat> if you don't have any questions about God like I do, you might still find it interesting like I do because, uh, you know, I just get fascinated by archaeology and by history. And uh, this combines the two with the Bible, which is three very large interests that I have in my life. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you liked it, comment below. Obviously, I'll put the link to his channel and to this particular video in the description. And for all of my viewers, I pray that you live an abundant life, that God blesses you greatly, that you have a long life and that you are healthy. I pray that God will keep you safe from harm. And I pray that he'll do the same for every person that you love. And I also pray that you will be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, you'll let God know your requests, and the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam era vet, out.